It was wonderful to have an opportunity to be with you on this exciting occasion of the first national collective impact convening in Israel. But I have no doubt that, that given that you've been able to pull off this amazing conference, bringing people from across the country together to begin to think about how to act differently, that you all can have what it takes so that two, three years down the line, you're not coming together to talk about collective impact conceptually. You're coming together to identify in communities across, across Israel what is it that you know works? What is actually getting results? And more importantly, how have you figured out how to spread what works across communities in order to get better results for kids? So I'll close by using some very rusty Hebrew to say, Bahak Shlaka Israel. Good luck to all of you. And I have great confidence that in, in a year from now, I'll be hearing wonderful stories about how you all have identified your outcomes you want to move, identified those ser services that actually get results and begun to align all the time, talent, and treasure represented in this room and across the country to get better results for kids and families. Congratulations. I just really wanted to congratulate all the leaders that are collected there at the summit there in Israel because focusing on collective impact in my mind is the best hope for us to achieve those transformative changes that we're looking to accomplish within our communities. But we have to set higher expectations and higher rigor of what those outcomes can be. And let me just leave you with one last phrase, and I'm going to have to make sure that I've got the uh, pronunciation right. Behatzlaka Israel. Congratulations to leadership from all sectors for attending the first ever Collective Impact Conference in Israel. I'm so delighted to be with you virtually and I want to encourage you to take an active role in considering the Collective Impact approach in your work. I wish you all meaningful and positive learning experiences during the conference. Behat Zlacha Israel. Shalom. Collective impact is the commitment of a group of important actors from different sectors to a common agenda for solving a specific social problem. And while our organization, FSG, certainly did not create the idea of cross-sector collaboration, my FSG colleagues named the idea Collective Impact in a 2011 article in the Stanford Social Innovation Review after studying successful collaboratives across the country. Since the original article, we have continued to work directly with collaboratives to put this approach into practice and to research what it truly takes to use the approach to achieve meaningful results. This collective impact is a unique approach in that it shifts the focus of work in the social and public sector from a single problem or program or intervention to focusing on the outcome and future you want to see at a population level. The shift requires thinking about how all of the organizations and individuals who impact the issue need to be involved in working toward that solution in a coordinated way. This requires the coordination of a number of different organizations and often also the engagement of residents or people with lived experience who are affected by the issue to be involved in the collaborative. And while this is a really different way of working as a collaborative to co-create a future that the whole group wants to see, it is critical because we do know that issues like education or healthcare cannot be solved alone by a single organization. So moving from this paradigm of isolated impact, where organizations work separately, to collective impact is really essential for addressing complex issues. <laughs> Now, there is a reason that collective impact is a new idea, and there's a reason that people haven't really stuck with it before. That primary reason is that it's really, really difficult. 
the way that most countries uh, have begun to have approached education is through siloed and isolated systems. So there may be an education system, there may be uh, NGOs, there may be uh, other government agencies that are providing services, and they're all operating in a siloed way. The whole purpose of collective impact is to say that rather than viewing our turf issues, rather than identifying the things that we do as the most important thing, it's critical to identify and start focusing on the outcomes we hope to achieve together. And not to worry that there may be a limited amount of resources to get that done, but to have confidence that over time, as you begin to identify what really works for kids in your community or for those you're trying to serve, that resources will begin to flow to what works. There is tons of interest in this concept across the, the globe right now. Collective impact is hot. But without a doubt, what we're starting to see is everybody's recognizing how hard it really is. The article on collective impact in the Stanford Social Innovation was absolutely outstanding. But unfortunately, unfortunately, it was a very sanitized version of reality. It made it sound like everybody can just one day start singing songs together and everybody's working together and everything's completely rosy. We now know that that's not the case. So it's critical to manage expectations and to make sure that as you're diving into this work, you're recognizing that it's going to take a deep, deep commitment of all the leaders like yourself in this room who right now are willing to take time out of your very busy schedules to begin to figure out how could we actually operate in new and different ways. You know, since the article around collective impact was published less than four or five years ago, there has become worldwide interest. And because of that, you have to need, you need to distinguish between the buzz, what's exciting about it, everybody's talking about it, and the results. And I think in many ways, we're kind of conflicted between those two. So what I think the real opportunity for Israel is to understand that there's some real power in collective impact, but it can only be measured by the true movement to outcomes that we can achieve. And you have to be more rigorous, I think, in what you expect about the timeline to achieve outcomes. For example, we've seen some collective impact efforts that it might take 10 years to move the needle on, say, third grade reading, where we've seen others that can actually get all children in high uh, poverty locations reading on grade level within three years. So I think you really have to apply that sense of moving from the buzz, oh, isn't this exciting, to really getting to the rigor and extremely pushing up your expectations for what's possible. Over the past few years, the idea of collective impact has really gained momentum, not only in the US and Canada, but really across the globe. From colleagues like yourselves in Israel, to efforts in Australia and New Zealand, to Denmark, to Honduras, this idea is really resonating and being put into practice in an incredibly wide range of geographies for an, a very broad range of different social and environmental issues. In fact, the Collective Impact Forum has members from over 100 countries demonstrating that there's a global learning community emerging on this topic. I would love to invite you all to participate in this learning community on collectiveimpactforum.org.